Hi everybody. Dave Soriano. I'm a chemistry professor with the University of Pittsburgh's Bradford campus in Bradford, Pennsylvania, USA. And this lecture is titled First Generation Feedstocks. And this is from a course that I teach, Introduction to Biofuels. So let's run through this and uh, hopefully you'll pick up some uh, information that may be of value to you anywhere in the world that you're listening and reading. First generation feedstocks. The various biomass feedstocks used to make biofuels can be grouped into two basic categories. The currently available first generation, well that would consist of uh, sugar cane, sugar beets, sweet sorghum, grains would include corn, wheat, barley, cassava, that's tapioca in the United States, and sorghum, sweet sorghum grain. Oil seed crops such as rapeseed, sorry for the tape, uh, typos as we go through this, rapeseed or canola oil as it's called in North America, soybean, palm oil, and jotropha oil. This lecture will focus on the first generation feedstocks, alternative oil sources for biodiesel production including sunflower, mustard, waste vegetable oil, microalgae, and animal oils. My own research here at school at, uh, in the chemistry department, I'm a associate professor of chemistry, I'm working on the production of potential biodiesel which can be used at low temperature. In the typical northeastern United States winter it remains liquid and the synthetic diesel fuels I'm producing are made from totally re renewable resources, one of which is predicted to be selling for 10 to 12 cents a gallon in the United States in the next year to two years. Um, getting back to the lecture here, alternative oil sources for biodiesel would include the uh, sunflower, mustard, waste vegetable oil, microalgae, and animal oils. The lecture will conclude with a discussion of the varying production potentials for these current feedstocks and their overall suitability for expanded biofuel production. Next generation feedstocks which have much greater potential for expanding biofuels for transportation energy are discussed in, in a, an lecture that I will upload here to YouTube. Just going to turn down this volume a little bit and we'll get back to business. In countries fostering biofuels development, the primary impetus has been to subsidize or otherwise support the agricultural sector. This has been the traditional approach. And the approach remains a central priority to biofuels initiatives globally. Currently, only a few crops have provided the world's ethanol and biodiesel for, for, for fuel utility, and this will be important as we go through the lecture. In Brazil, Nearly all ethanol is derived from sugarcane, and this production is the highest volume generated in the world. In the United States, more than 90% of the ethanol comes from corn, and this is the second largest production source globally. Corn is also one of the most important agricultural crops globally. In Europe, 70% of biodiesel is produced from rapeseed oil. This is the world's second largest source of plant oils. Sunflower oil is second there. In the United States, nearly all biodiesel is generated from soybean oil, virgin soybean oil. This is the largest source of plant oil for food and fuel in the world. The two crops with the largest planted area worldwide, wheat and rice, are not significant for biofuel use. A key variable here is the percent yield of biofuel per hectare. Approximate, uh, approximately two and a half acres is a hectare. 
In general, starches from corn or wheat, which are grown in temperate climates, have lower yields than sugar, which the latter is grown in more tropical areas. Of course, Cuba, uh, the Caribbean, South America, and other countries uh, with more tropical uh, climate. In 2002, and I'm lecturing right here with you on uh, approximately January 20th of 2012. In ten, uh, ten years ago, Brazilian sugarcane total production was 6,500 liters per hectare, which was more than double the United States production of corn. Likewise, oil seed crops, soy rapeseed, grown in temperate climates, have lower yields than tropical oil seed plants like pond. Here's a look at some numbers. And you can see the sugar cane, sugar beet, corn, wheat, barley, palm oil, rapeseed oil, sunflower oil, soy, and trofofa. And you can see that the trofofa is very important cash crop in India. And the palm oil is very important in Malaysia and Brazil. Barley in the European Union, wheat, European Union, etc. Sugarcane, you can see Brazil and a growing, growing amount of it being developed in uh, India. Now, the first generation feedstocks, here's the yields you get, liters per hectare. And barley pays out 1,000 liters per hectare, wheat 2,500, corn 3,000, sugar beets 5,000, sugarcane 6,000. Very impressive figure there. Soybean. 500 and castor oil 500 sunflower 800 so you have to keep in mind the uh, the yields now sugar crops the most significant crop for producing biofuels today clearly is sugar cane supplying more than 40 percent of all fuel ethanol in the world the majority of the world's sugar cane comes from the center south of brazil where long growing season Natural rainfall and appropriate soil provide fertile conditions for cane production. On a smaller scale, ethanol is also produced from sugar cane grown in Australia, China, India, Indonesia, Pakistan, South Africa, and Thailand. In recent years, nearly half of Brazil's sugar cane has gone to producing ethanol. Sugar cane stalks contain so much sugar that the plant is currently the lowest cost source of biofuel. <coughs> Cane plants produce a lot of fiber in the stalks and the leaves, making it possible to also harvest a significant amount of cellulosic feedstock for better bioenergy uses along with the sugar harvest. Sugar cane requires warm weather and around 850 millimeters annually of rainfall, and this concentrates the potential growing land in the world's tropical regions. Latin America, 23%. Africa, 18%. Countries exporting raw sugar such as Brazil, Argentina, Thailand, and Guatemala are best positioned to have extra cropland capacity for sugar cane ethanol in the near term. Now smaller producers, Colombia, Cuba, Philippines, and Swaziland may begin to produce for domestic and regional markets if there is growing demand for bioethanol. These countries indeed are already developing programs for production. Over the past decade, the area under sugarcane cultivation has grown at an average annual rate of 1.4%. In Cuba, formerly the largest raw sugar exported to the United States, here the cultivated area is declining at an annual rate of 5.8% due to shortages in production equipment and fuel. Technical expertise is also a problem in any given country. Thank you for listening to this uh, opening the opening remarks here and uh, please look for uh, all of our other lectures which will be uploaded to YouTube today and tomorrow this is January uh, 20th 2012 thank you very much Dave Soriano and if you need to get a hold of me Soriano s-o-r-i-a-n-o at pit p-i-t-t -T dot e-d-u thanks for listening Bye now.